Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Samantha Rizundu and today we're doing a full face of high end versus their dupes. I have previously done a video where I said the high end is worth the hype and better than their dupes. I still need to do a dupes is better than their high end. Uh, like the original product, the dupe is better. But for now, I've just got a bunch of stuff and it's mixed. So I will tell you if I think the high end is better or the dupe. So the video coming, I still haven't done it. Um, I just I just went through my drawers and like picked things out. Oh my God, I'm sweating. Um, is just a mixture of high end and their dupes and I'll tell you which one I like better. Um, some of them will be equal, but we're gonna do half half because that's fun to do and see if, if it's all worth, you know. Makeup's expensive, even the drugstore's expensive now. I'm schwitzing, I'm so sweaty, it's very hot today, it feels like summer, climate change is real, and we're in spring. And um, I've had to close all the blinds, I can't have a fan on, so I'm a little bit toasty. So, um, if you see some beads dropping down my face, you know why. Do you like my Bottega dupes? I got these from Kmart for three dollars. Three dollars. Okay, let's get into it. I have so much makeup in front of me. Primers are very similar. Okay, let's do high-end drugstore. What do you think? So even the packaging looks the same. This is the Laura Mercier Pure Canvas Primer Blurring. I love this product. It's probably the best blurring uh, primer out there and it's silicon free. That's hard to do, I don't know how they did that. And then we have the L'Oreal Prime Lab 24 Hour Pore Minimizer so it is very smoothing and blurring. This one has AHA, LHA, BHA 1%. So I uh, would like to put some on this pimple of mine that just came up today. It is unwelcomed. Also, I apologize for the hair. It's, it's a little sweaty. <laughs> uh, but we're going to go with it. You guys know I'm not here for hair. I love hair, but I'm not good at it. But, you know, we've got to do what we've got to do. Okay, let's do the... L'Oreal first. It's a really nice pink kind of color. And I'm just looking into my mirror here so I can see. And they're very similar in that they go on really um, hydrating and like easy to spread. And then they just like, when they set down, it's just blurred. It's pretty cool. I'm kind of glad I got this one. I was deciding between this one and the mattifying. And this one's really nice. I know a few of you said you like it too. I'm just adding the tiniest bit. Let's get some BHA on that pimp ale. I don't know if it's going to work, but it can't hurt. And oh my god. Then the Laura Mercier. This is fantastic. This is the one I recommend the most. Um, at work. I work at Mecca, which is a beauty store like Sephora, and we sell Laura Mercier. And this is the one I would recommend if you want to have that flawless blur underneath your makeup. It just, I when I demo it, everyone buys it because you put it on your hand and you can instantly see a smoother hand. I mean, it's harder to kind of tell when you've got no makeup on but it feels nice, It's neither side is tacky, it dries down, but not drying. It's very lovely, they're very similar, and very different in price. For foundation, I've decided to go Natural Hydrating Dewy. On the expensive side, we have the Hourglass Illusion, one of my favorites. This I would say is a light to medium coverage, however, if you use too much, it looks cakey. So I'm gonna use it at a light coverage level. That's when it looks really beautiful. And then the uh, other side, we have the La Roche-Posay BB Cream in 01. Uh, they both have SPF. This is only 15, this one is 50. But honestly, that doesn't even matter. You should still be wearing sunscreen underneath anyway because you're never gonna use enough foundation for it to be substantial coverage uh, for sunscreen protection. 
from the sun um, so they're very comparable I would say this one is a tiny bit more dewy but they both look really hydrating so I like to use my finger for these products because they are designed to be more natural and I've got to remember I'm doing half a face so we've got to do half a pump but that oh my god see that uh, blurring primer underneath has made this very smooth this is a very much a perfecting kind of foundation but still really natural so yeah I prefer to use only a light amount and it just makes my skin look really natural it doesn't really look like I'm wearing too much but it gives it a really nice healthy aspect this one here I would say is a little bit dewier but they are comparable in how you would wear it. They both have SPF and they're both a light coverage. And they both got skincare benefits. This one's got hyaluronic acid. I don't know about this one. Photo pollution expert. Okay. Mm, I even say I might add a little bit more because this is quite light. I'd say this is definitely sheer to light and the hourglass is more light. Yeah, there we go, that's a little bit better. But yeah, this one just has that little bit more obvious dewiness. So if you're dry, you could wear both, but if you're oily, I would probably recommend this one for more long wear. I am oily, but I still like really nice dewy skin tints for every day because I don't care if my makeup doesn't last till the end of the day during day to day makeup routine but yeah both really nice and natural however our concealer is full coverage <laughs> uh, that's just what I had and we have on the high end side the Urban Decay Stay Naked Quickie I have the shade 20NN so it's more neutral and then I have the Revolution IRL Filter Finish in C3, so this is cool tone. So the tones are not the same, but the formula is very similar. This is a soft matte concealer. I would describe this the same. It's not a heavy matte. I would say it's a soft matte. So they both dry down. They're both full coverage. Um, they're just a really nice concealer. So just going to do a little bit. But yeah, this one's a little bit more neutral, so they're going to look different. But I just know in their formula that they're quite similar. And that's why you can bring something like this really natural tint to be more long wear. Because this has got more coverage where you need it. And it dries down, so you wouldn't even need to set this with a powder. It's not essential. Because it's soft matte, it's kind of almost self-setting especially if you have dry skin you would not need powder with this I'm going to use powder for the sake of the video and then the revolution so this side's going to look a little bit brighter see how that's just kind of perfected my redness which I do have yeah Beautiful. Um, will I do a bit of powder first or will I go into my cream products? Maybe I'll do my brows because <laughs> that's too much decision making for me. Uh, benefit precisely my brow in 2.2. Sometimes my bogan just really comes out. 2.5. 2.5. And then the CoverGirl Ultra Fine Brow Pencil in Soft Blonde. The colors are pretty close. 2.5 is a neutral blonde, I believe, and this is a soft blonde. I even find the soft blonde darker, the cover girl, which is quite fascinating. But I prefer, like, I, I still like it. I just think that precisely my brow is my perfect brow match. This one's a really close second, though where it's not warm. I can't do warm brows. I do have a cooler toned brow. I can get very intense eyebrows very quickly. 
So I appreciate a good shade range with brow pencils. That's why I love the Benefit so much. But this one's really nice. I used to have a different shade, but I think I prefer the Soft Blonde. And then the 2.5, I've used different shades as well. Oh, the Precisely My Brow, sorry, from Benefit. But I think 2.5 is the one that I love the most. I've had two, and I think that was too light. I've had three, which was too dark. So 2.5 is a really good shade match for me. And it's just the perfect amount of pigment. It's not too creamy, but it's also not too dry. They are a wonderful product. I just don't like the price for such a small um, amount of product. But I do feel like these last. Some brow pencils don't last because they're too creamy. I almost went in on the other side. You can kind of see they look pretty similar. And then the brow gel is the brow setter by Benefit. Everything that's come out has based, all the clear brows base it off of these. There we go. It is a really good one. And then the dupe is the Mecca Max Brow Guru. This is my second one of these. I really like this. I don't love how big the, the brush is, but it still works. It still works. So I really like those. Brows are kind of, it's, it's got to be, oh gosh, this is really hot. My poor laptop. I'm using my blushes to aerate it underneath. Um, it's a hot day. I forgot what I was talking about. So shall we continue? <laughs> I will do cream products first. Um, and then I will powder. I think that just makes sense. For bronzer, I have the Huda Beauty Tantor Contour. This is the shade Fair. And then I have the Revolution Ultra Cream Bronzer in Medium. But they're quite comparable in shade. Um, I've used this quite a lot. The Huda Beauty. They're both like a... I would say the Huda Beauty is more neutral. And this one's more cool tone. But they're pretty comparable and this one really shears out more so than this one I think but they're gonna look pretty similar on my face and that's why I picked these two the hooder is very creamy um, and can be very much like our full coverage cream bronzer kind of like the NARS one I would find that in texture those are really similar but I find in the um, how it looks at the end these two are very similar. I wouldn't say they have the same formula. But if you're on a budget, the Revolution is amazing. And they're both like a cream formula. I wanted to get something in that realm. Because I have a few different ones, but I feel like these are probably the most comparable in how you would use it as like a contour shade, but can also be a bronzer shade because they're both really neutral. And then the Revolution in the shade medium. The light is fine too, but this one's got just that little bit more. It smells like pineapples too, which I love. It's my favorite fragrance is pineapple. Um, it is darker. There you go. <laughs> I think I need to use my concealer side a little bit just to make sure I don't overdo it. But yeah, the light was still nice, but it was more warmer tone. This was a lot more neutral, so that's why I went for this. And Tanika told me to, so. Not me specifically, but anything she says, I do, so. <laughs> Both a neutral way to bronze up. This one even looks more natural. I'm shocked. I thought this was more full coverage. But there you go. It is, this is fair and this is medium, so they are completely different skin tone recommendations so that probably is why but there we go so I've used this a lot but it looks like I've never used it it's quite funny so this is a product that will last you a long time as well all cream bronzers kind of last a long time because you don't use much at all all right blush on the spenny side we have Shantikai I love this blush the cheek gelée hydrating gel cream blush in vibrant 
And I went for this one because it's got that really nice gel texture, but also gives you that beautiful summer strawberry girl, raspberry girl, whatever you want to call it, kind of vibe. But it's still really nice and sheer. It's not heavily pigmented, so it gives you that color you want without being over the top. Isn't that pretty? And then on the uh, budget side, we have the Models Prefer Liquid Blush. This is new to me. This is in the shade Fruity. So this is the tiniest bit warmer. Uh, but it's the same and it feels like that really lightweight gel, gel texture. If you want to achieve that kind of warm, ready, pinky blush look. See how it shees out just like the Shantakai? It's a really lightweight formula. It's just slightly different. This is slightly more pink cool toned and this is slightly warmer. But the formula and the way it looks on the cheeks is so comparable. I think this is $16. This is going to be around $60. I'll have everything linked down below though, as per usual. Let's do a little bit of powder. These are my favorite, this is my favorite powder dupe. I feel like this is the one, you know? The Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder and the Elf Halo Glow Setting Powder are so similar. They're both dry girl friendly and they've got, their, they set down and they mattify, but it's not a heavy matte and there's, the ever so slightest bit of luminosity. So it doesn't look glittery in your face at all or shimmery. So when you swatch it, it looks like, oh, you're like, oh, there's going to be glitter on my face. No, it's not a thing. It just is so nice. And I highly recommend both. I'll be taking this one away with me when I travel. It's just the perfect powder. I actually try and not use it so I have it for when I do travel. That's all I really need. Beautiful. We're just set in place now. We're feeling good. Uh, this is the travel size, I forgot to say. The big size, definitely worth it too, but I wanted a travel powder, that's why I bought this one. And then the Halo looks like this, very similar. It's got the, the ever so slight yellow tone. And what I do is I get a bunch and then I kind of swirl it in the cap so it gets on there evenly. I've got a little bit on my laptop, good one. And then I'm tapping off the excess because you don't want too much powder under the eye. I do it all the time. It's very easy to go overboard. But by the end of the day, you can look cakey. We just don't want that, guys. So they're going to look the same. At the end of the day, a lot of powders look the same. But they're both setting, slightly mattifying, but also luminous. Luminous! These ones are probably my closest dupe out of everything. It's the Laura Mercier Matte Radiance Baked Powder in Bronze 2. Love it. Love it! It's so soft and blurring and smoothing and radiant. And then we have the Milani a Baked Bronzer in Dolce 9. Tell me that isn't a dupe. Tell me that isn't a dupe. I would say, is it this one looks a little bit, one of them looks more warm on the skin, but they look pretty similar. So let's go with Laura. And yes, I'm using the same brush. It's really not a big deal. So I would say from memory, this one was more natural looking. It's a lot more buildable. And that's very true to Laura Mercier. She's got very natural buildable products. And Hourglass too. That's why I love them. But it's just, my skin looks flawless every time I use this bronzer could even like forego setting powder and just use this and it just it's almost like the hourglass ambient powders it just looks soft it looks beautiful and then Milani in Dolce 
yeah this one's a little bit darker but I ain't complaining it's just a little bit more pigmented I would say but still good for fair skin fair to light I also have the darker one the darker shade of this that I use for when I'm fake tanned but I love them both this does the same thing just smoothing perfecting brilliance oh, I feel alive I feel alive I've got bronzer on she's back she's back okay I'm myself again happy girl happy girl I'm happy when I have bronzer I'm sad when I don't have bronzer I'm gonna put a little bit on my eyes because I've got one single shadow so I just want a little bit of bronzer in my outer eye so it's like cohesive the blush is over here we've got another extreme dupe extreme dupe right I'm gonna show you this is what I'm gonna do on TikTok I'm gonna show you these two blushes which one is Nas? Which one is Nas? Come on, comment now. I'm going to give you five seconds. Which one is Nas? This one, I will say the more purpley one. The Wait. The more cool toned one or the more warm toned one? Which of this is Nas? Which of these are Nas? Okay. You can't tell, can you? You can't tell. Is it this one, the cool toned, or this one, the warm toned? I'll tell you what, one of them is about three or four dollars, and the NARS goes for what, 50 to 60 dollars? I actually don't know the price. All right, so the NARS is this one. If you, correct, if you said the cooler, more cooler toned one, you were correct. If you said the more warmer tone one, you are incorrect. <laughs> w7 Nars. Isn't that insane? They apply the same in terms of quality. They're both super smooth. Let me swatch it for you. Okay, Nars is the worst blush swatch. It's like pointless. You can't even see anything. But they look so beautiful on the skin. This will be more pigmented. But even this is still quite light. All right, let's get my blush brush. It's very important. And we'll do the NARS first because it's lighter. I actually have a clean brush. Are you proud of me? <laughs> but NARS blushes always um, apply really nicely. So this isn't going to look accurate because we've got the cream blush underneath. I've got to say NARS blushes are one of my favorites. They're so soft but buildable and they just look great on the skin. They look super natural with like that great little flush of color. And so for me, yeah, I'm paying lots of money. I'll pay lots of money for a NARS blush and Laguna Bronzer. I'm a NARS gal. But I can't remember the price. I don't have my phone on me. I need to charge it. But this, 100% under $5. I want to say I paid three. But that's just... I could be wrong. It could be five. Either way, it's dirt cheap. So this is the shade. I didn't even tell you. The NARS blush is in Behave, which I love. It's probably my favorite shade. And then the W7 blush is in Strict Tease. It's actually working out well because this side was a little bit cooler toned anyway. And this side was already warmer toned. So that does work. But see how that's still really soft? I would say the tiniest bit more powdery than NARS. But I'm telling you what so close they have duped these very well I do need to go back I was even where I was at chemist warehouse yesterday but I was with the kids so you know I was in and I was out oh my god Mona's getting to that age where everything's a no and if you say we can't do that full tantrum he's getting to that age and so I just don't want to go out in public anymore I'm terrified he's two by the way not 16 <laughs> We're looking great. I'm very happy. Considering I've got two different sides of makeup, I'm feeling good. So these, I wouldn't say, are exactly the same in the performance, but they're both pink highlighters. So we have the Bobbi Brown in Pink Glow. Stunning. And then we have the Mecca Max in Opal Glow, which is a pink tone. 
but they they look different on the skin the opal glow is very natural it's a more of a subtle highlight which I personally love um, this one's a little bit more blinding but she's a classic but they're both pink so they are going to look different on the skin I'll be honest with you guys I love this one because I think gone are the days with blinding highlight which is fair enough that was really intense time for the makeup community a really intense time so let's go on with this one it's almost a little bit more icy it's not as intense as some of them are but I still find it to be quite intense and texture enhancing just going to bring that in here because even that little bit was a lot We'll do a little bit on the side here. Oh, my nose keeps running. And a little bit here. Is that sweat or highlight? You'll never know. We've gotten that glow back. And I'm happy about it. It's stunning, but it's a highlighter. Let me just... And we're going to go in with Opal Glow. This swatches horribly. If you go into store and swatch this, you're going to say, Sam, that's horrible. But it looks really nice on the skin. So I don't really care what you have to say. All right. Cute. Cute as a button. Cute as a button. I want to say this is quickly becoming a favorite highlighter of mine. And she's affordable. I want to say... $20. I feel like all the new Mecca stuff is around the $20 mark. Cute. I love it. Having a good makeup day. We're going to do setting spray because I like to do setting spray before eyes because otherwise there's always a disaster. Spenny Side, Charlotte Tilbury, Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. So this is uh, designed to be long wear. It's not dewy, it's not matte, it's just long wear. And that is my favorite. That's my favorite kind of setting spray. I don't want dewy. I don't want matte. Just give me long wear. That's why I'm putting it on my face. And then on the affordable side, we've got a lot of Mecca Max. It wasn't intentional, but that's just how it happened. I think because I've duped a lot of Emco Beauty in the past and it's just so obvious, I wanted to do something else. So I've got a lot of Mecca Max, but that's fine. Mecca Max is great. It used to not be great, but now it is great. The Life Proof Makeup Setting Spray. I think this is hard to get. I had a customer ask for this and I couldn't find it anywhere. Has it been discontinued? I couldn't tell you. Is it sold out everywhere? I think so. So if you can get your hands on it. This is the small one. I recommend getting the big one because the value is in the big one. But this is good. I've almost finished it. And then this, oh, I save for special occasions. I use this when I'm like going out. Nothing compares to this one. But if I had to compare, it would be the Mecca Max one. It's good. Also the Milani. The Milani. If you can't get this one, get the Milani. Either or. Fantastic. I should have said the Milani one, but that's okay. There's multiple options. This one is just like doused my face, but it will dry down. Okay, eyes. Always. Always. This was a treat to myself. Oh! This is the little spatula sponge that I don't use. This is, sorry, Christian Dior CD. This is the Monocooler Couture uh, High Color Eyeshadow in Beige Mitza. It's a metallic and it is stunning. I love it. I'm glad I bought it because this is me in an eyeshadow. And we're going to just put this on my eye. We're not doing a full on look. Let's be honest, this is what I would do anyway. This is my go-to look. A subtle bronzy neutral eye. I call it an everyday smoky. And it is beautiful, I've got to say. Sometimes you buy luxury and it's like, what am I paying for? This, it's beautiful. It's like rich but subtle at the same time. I don't mean like I'm a rich person, I mean like rich in color, <laughs> but still subtle. Oh, it's gorgeous. A little bit underneath. 
I didn't bring an eyeliner. That's all right. We don't need it. And my dupe is, I've got to say, it's a good dupe. It's a bloody good dupe. It's the Sephora Colourful Metal Effect in number eight, Shock Chock. I think this is a hard one to get. I don't know if it went viral, but ooh, this is super creamy. It's almost like, feels like a cream, but it does apply, apply like a powder. And I need a tissue. I'm not sick. I've just got a runny nose. I think it's just this hay fever kind of season. I'm actually feeling pretty good these days, which is shocking. <laughs> shocking. Okay, so shock chock. Oh, you have to get this. If you love these chocolatey neutral tones, when I tell you, it's probably better than a Dior. I know that's a really big call, but it's richer. It's more pigmented and it's shinier. So if you like the subtleness of this, go for this. But if you like a little bit of more of an air pop, go for this. I'm using a brush, but it goes on full intense with your finger. Both of them do actually. Because they've got that kind of creaminess to it, but it is a powder. You know what I'm talking about? I'd say this one is the tiniest bit warmer. And this one's a little bit more cooler. But they're very, very comparable. And this one's a little bit more like micro glitter. And this one's just metallic. But the color's pretty similar. And what you want out of it, they look very similar. Like, can you tell if one looks more expensive than the other? I think these go for around $15. And obviously I'm talking in Australian dollars because I am Australian. So if you're American, it's probably like $10, if I had to guess. And if you're British, it's probably like eight pounds. That was a really bad accent. It's probably like eight pounds. And euros, I can't figure that out. So I'm really sorry, maybe like nine pounds. That was a Scandinavian accent. Beautiful. She's beautiful. All right, mascara. I don't know if these are dupes, but they're two of my favorites. So they're both two really good mascaras. I don't know how you dupe mascara, because they kind of all look the same to me. They're either good or they're bad. I don't really know what else to say about mascara. Anyway, I love both of these so much. They give me length, they separate, and they give me volume. Bobbi Brown, Smokey Eye, love. I've got two backups. I don't really have high-end mascaras. That's not true. I just had the hourglass unlocked, but I had to declutter it because of my pink eye. <laughs> but I have this one. I just think mascaras, you don't have to pay a lot for. That's what I think. I was sent this one and I fell in love with it. So I bought a two pack from the Estee Lauder Friends and Family sale. So I got it for a drugstore price. There aren't a lot of mascaras where I'm like, wow, this is like life changing. I think it's just because I don't have amazing brows. I do really like it. And I'm just doing one layer because that's just the kind of gal that I am, all right? I'll only do two layers if I'm like really going out. Oh, the other one, I should have told you. It's the Mecca Max Wink Ink Super Mascara. Not the tubing one, regular mascara, Wink Ink. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. I bought this for my full face of Mecca Max video. That's the only reason I bought this. And it's one of those things where I'm like, I'm so glad I bought this over the tubing one. I haven't tried the tubing one, I'm sure it's good. But I've got lots of tubing mascara, so I just wanted a regular mascara. And I love this. It really separates my lashes. It is, I would say it's more lengthening than volumizing. Whereas this one's a little bit more volumizing. I don't know if you can really tell. But I love it. I love it so much. It's one of the best affordable mascaras I've used. The Wink Ink. It just, for what I want, I like lengthening and separating. I like it to make it look like my, my lashes are naturally just long and wispy, not chunky. And that's what this does. I find it, you know what this is an actual dupe for now that I think about it, but I don't own it anymore. I used to own it. 
the hourglass caution not unlocked unlocked is the tubing caution the triangle gold one this would be a dupe for that so if you like that you will like this it's just lengthening and gorgeous look at me talking about mascaras like they're good but I don't know if you can tell that this just looks more wispy and this looks thicker so they're both really good they're not a dupe though I'm realizing that now as I put it on my face they are not a dupe but they're both very good lip liner I wanted the Emco Beauty lip liner but I couldn't find it for the Charlotte Tilbury because it's a very obvious dupe but I found one same so this is the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in Pillow Talk. We all know it, and I love it. I bought this before Charlotte Tilbury came to Australia. I bought this from the website. So I've had this one a while. And it is fantastic lip liner. Like, totally get it. Totally worth the money. Um, I've got the Mecha Max Pout Pencil in Fancy. This is kind of a Mecha Max video, isn't it? Sorry. I just was picking things out and this is an affordable brand, you know? So Fancy, I'd say, is ever so slightly cooler toned. These are fantastic pencils. I think they go for around $18. Pencil form is the way to go as opposed to roll-ups all day, every day. Okay, lipstick. This is the final product, guys. I'm sad. Are you sad that this is almost over? I'm having so much fun. <laughs> This is the uh, Gucci. Now these are, I tried to, they're pretty similar in tone, but it's the formula that they're super similar. The Gucci Rouge de Beauté Brilliant in Linnet Stone. I don't know what that means. What does Linnet Stone mean? Is it a place? So this is super cool toned. It's a shine, juicy, juicy shine. It's got pigment, so it's above a gloss level, but it's not heavily pigmented like a cream lipstick would be. So it looks more pigmented because of the lip liner, but if I did a really soft lip liner, this would be really sheer, but with a bit of pigment. And then I've got my favorite lipstick, the Mecha Max Pout Pop in Top Down. This one is a little bit more neutral. But it's that same shine, juicy, hydrating formula. See? Not a huge difference. I wore this when I was fake tanned and it was horrible. So you have to have a cool or a neutral undertone to wear this Gucci one because it's quite cool tone grey. If you're olive, maybe you'd suit this. Um, but this one is more versatile with fair to light skin tones I would say because it is still quite light but that like my face looks the same can you even tell the difference all right so we have our affordable side and our spenny expensive side honestly I'm looking at myself and I don't see a difference I don't see, oh, see, there's where I've been sweating. I've got a patch. Look at that patch. <gasps> Samantha. I'm sweating. Oh, no. Blend, blend, blend. Okay, I think we're okay. My true color was showing. Shocking. All right, that's everything, guys. I'm pretty happy with it. I think this just proves you don't need expensive makeup. It is a luxury to buy um, expensive makeup and absolutely do it if you want to or if you can. But I think this just proves that you don't need it because we've literally got the same outcome. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Make sure to subscribe if you are new here and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.